Hello everybody, Brandon with Electrical Specialists. Today we're gonna to do a video on hidden junction boxes and why you do not want them in your home. We seem to find this a lot, people ask about it. Uh, a common theme is someone calls to ask, hey, can you hang a light on the side of my house or can you replace the light? And I say, sure, but sometimes we take the light down to replace it and there's no box. Um, and I try to explain to them why they need a box. Steve, can you give them a couple ideas of why you need a box on the side of your house. All right, well the, the problem I think originates from the fact that if you are ever gonna have a problem with your electrical system, it's gonna be at a connection point. It's gonna be at a device or it's gonna be in a junction box. And the last thing you wanna do is hide one of those junction boxes because if there is a problem, that's where it's gonna be found. That's very fair and I, I was referring, I guess I jumped ahead, I jumped to one on the side of your house, but why does a junction need to be in a box? Why does wire nuts making wired connection need to be in an electrical box? Why does that matter? Why can't I just put it in my wall? Well, like I was saying, anytime there's gonna be a problem, it's gonna be at a connection point. And the reason we want those in boxes is when you do have a problem with a connection point, uh, heat gets created. It's usually a bad connection. And when you have a bad connection, it gets hot. So you end up with wire nuts or connection points melting, receptacles melting. Some people have seen those in their own homes. And uh, what you want is that inside a box that has a fire rating. All electrical boxes have a fire rating. Uh, they list those in hours. Uh, and if you look up the UL listing for each box, it'll actually list how long those, uh, how long of a rating that they actually have. And but you want a hot point, a hot point in a box or a hot point unit connection, you want that con, uh, contained in a fire rated electrical box that's suitable for its use. Okay, that's a good, a good definition there. So I'll make it a little more pointed. This all, most of this comes about because we go to someone's house to find out why a plug on the first floor doesn't work. And we find in the panel, everything's good, but it, on the way to the first floor, there's some kind of break in it. And we know there's no, box that we can open we've opened all the boxes so that's a red flag to us that there's a hidden connection somewhere we know that's a hidden junction box especially in a basement um, so that brings us to like being readily accessible why do boxes why do electrical boxes need to be readily accessible and actually I'll ask you the question what does readily accessible mean readily accessible means that even if you may have to use a tool but that that box can be gotten to uh, the mechanical cover of some type, uh, using use of a screwdriver, you can actually get to those connections, examine them, inspect them, and make any corrective measures that you need to make. Exactly, so if we can't get to it, so obviously the, the situations we're talking about that has happened multiple times, too many, is that we, I say we, we see these red flags, but that we can't find the box, we have to talk to the homeowner about, you may have a hidden junction box in your ceiling, so we get com uh, permission to tear some sheetrock out. Lo and behold, there used to be lights hanging in the basement and whether the homeowner or a uh, remodeler they hired, whoever it was, put sheetrock right over the junction boxes after they ran a wire out of the junction box up to the kitchen for a remodel. Now, I guess that'll bring us back to the point of how do those boxes get covered? How can we stop those boxes from getting covered? If you're just a homeowner like most of us and you don't know anything about electrical you don't know anything about hidden junction boxes how can i make sure that that never happens to my home all right well i guess first off i would say that whenever the electrical system gets put in in the first place or gets extended in the first place you want to make sure that you can go from an origination point say another receptacle or a switch box or something like that and make your wire run go from that point all the way to its next point where it's also going to be exposed. If you have a light fixture and you're going to do away with that light fixture, you can go ahead and take that box out, demo it completely, go back to where that box originated from or that switch or whatever and run a brand new wire from that location all the way to your new location. Uh, you, can, you can prevent this by uh, making sure that you yourself don't do it, but also anybody that you hire. Um, they may tell you, well, I can either hide a junction box in your ceiling or I can do it the right way and, and go back to its origination point. And the truth is when they ask you that or when it's offered, you should absolutely understand that they are thinking of your safety 
and the fact that honestly it's illegal to do it. You're not allowed to hide junction boxes. Uh, if you were to do so and have your home inspected and it was caught, it, it would fail that inspection and the drywall or whatever wall covering would have to be removed so that you could do it the right way. That's a good point. And we say this all not because, we're not just because we have to, we have to do this stuff or we lose our license. The real point is every single time we found one of these junction boxes so far, there was a bad connection, of course, which is why we were looking for it in the first place. And the wire nuts had actually melted. When you have a bad connection, it starts arcing. The arc creates resistance. Resistance creates heat. Heat creates a fire. So it's just, it's really just to make sure that houses don't burn down. Um, so if you're doing a remodel, if you're doing anything where you have existing electrical boxes and they're in the way and they need moved, call an electrical contractor, somebody who's licensed. Um, I would be very leery if your sheetrocker says, hey, no problem, I run wires all the time. Uh, ask to see his electrical license because he may think that he knows what he's doing and he may mean, he may mean no harm, but he's going to cause irreversible damage to your system. So nothing against sheet rockers. This could be a plumber. This could be an insulator. Uh, many jacks of all trades out there say they can do everything. And really, you want to hire one trade to do one thing. I don't hire my butcher to put a roof on my house just like I don't hire, you know, a plumber to run electrical in someone's home. So it's best just to have each trade specifically do their thing, in my opinion. Um, Steve, do you have anything else on me? Yeah, there? I was going to say, besides the fact that that you have uh, uh, potential for fire hazards and, and we're talking about the safety, safety of your home. We can also talk about extended costs. The truth is, uh, as a technician who goes out and troubleshoots these issues all the time, the hardest troubleshoot there is, is a hidden, uh, hidden junction box, um, or even worse, a hidden wiring connection that doesn't even have a junction box, but a hidden connection point that got completely covered up. These are very troublesome. They're very time consuming. We have to we have to go through and exhaust every effort we can to locate where that junction is, and then and then almost guess where it is we're going to discover it when we do open up the wall. That makes it very time consuming because the last thing we want to do is open up a customer's wall. So that service call that we come out on, we might be there two and three hours before we finally go. You know what? We got to bite the bullet. You're going to have to open up this space right here in your ceiling. And uh, that's such a hard thing for us to tell a uh, homeowner because we certainly wouldn't want to be wrong. The added time gets added to the job and the overall cost. Um, and then when you have that, because it takes so much time um, and, and because of uh, us having to open up the ceiling, that creates even more cost because those ceilings have to be repaired. And the truth is, I'm a pretty good electrician, but I'm lousy at drywall. You wouldn't want me to do that. You're going to want to hire a professional in that in that field to do that. So that's a whole other person, a whole other trip charge, a whole other contractor to come out and uh, make trips to the supply houses and, and do those repairs for you. It can it really make it costly down the road if you allow it, your cousin, brother, uncle, husband, ex-husband, anyone to go ahead, uh, to do wiring methods that are illegal or, or are going to set you up for failure down the road. That's an excellent point, Steve. And I'll, I'll say, unfortunately, we see these not just in old remodels, but we see them in brand new remodels that we've come to do wiring behind mm -hmm. someone who's came in and remodeled the kitchen or remodeled the basement. They just literally covered them up. So it's not something that they used to do. This could happen today. So something to look out for. Make sure nobody covers up your junction boxes. Brandon and Steve with Electrical Specialist. If you guys have anything you'd like to hear about, please leave it in the comments. We'd love to make some more videos on what you guys want to know. Like and subscribe. Have a good weekend.